it's more than one click, but once you've set up the action, one click blurs the background, save, continue. What is up good people? I hope you're well, I hope you're doing great and I hope you're creating good, in, good images for uh, social media and people and family and so on. In today's video, we're gonna make a very simple action which basically splits your image up and then you can blur the background to get a little bit more of a blur if you wanna either get a distracting thing away or you just wanna fake a little bit more depth of field. We're gonna show you how to do this all using uh, subject selection. It's very simple in Photoshop. Let's jump right into it. See you on the computer. Okay, I know it's a bit darker now. It's just I didn't have the light up. So I've got this little, this little thing from Godox, which is really handy. You can see how dark it is now. And then, boop, that's just clipped on my, onto the screen of the A6400. Anyway, um, so this is a very simple technique that you can use for a lot of stuff. You need the latest Photoshop, okay? So what we're gonna do, is uh, I've got these three files open here. So this is a new shoot I'm busy with. You will see this uh, video go up soon. This is a shoot I did in the past. You've obviously seen this video on my YouTube already. And then uh, this is a shoot from long ago with Mia. Okay, so you can see here on my actions I've actually made one called select subject. So this is the thing we're gonna make today and then we're using that, we're gonna blur the background. So it's very simple. So I say it's one click, but that's once you've done this, it's basically gonna be one click. You can also set this up to go straight to blur, which we can do. But uh, this one's been set up just to select the subject, isolate it, cut it out. Okay, so we'll do, we'll do two actions today, okay? First, I'm just gonna show you how easy it is. So this is a, obviously an edited photo already. We click on that, we give it a second, okay? So now what you can see here, let me make this bigger. What you can see over here is um, it's pulled her out and then it's cut her out of a, a duplicate of the bottom, okay? There's a reason why I do this because there's another, I'll show you, Oh, okay, let me just finish this. So you click on this layer uh, and then you go blur, Gaussian blur, right? And then there you can already see it's blurred it, right? However, bring this up here. We can we can blur it quite a bit. Um, I wouldn't go so far. Like you could go like ridiculous. But now you can see what's happening there. There's a glow. So you don't want to go too far. I would go, like obviously a lot of this you're going to blur in the camera itself. Like this was shot at probably like, 2.8 or something. So the background's already pretty blurry, so you wouldn't need to do this, but if you need to, just add a little bit, or if you have a lens that can't blur as much, you can use this technique to kind of fake a little bit of blur. It's not gonna look the same as real bokeh, but it will help a little. So you can see the subject isolation there, and then you can actually drop the opacity a bit. So if you don't go too far, you can't see the, the, the ghosting around the head. You can see it a little bit, um, and we can fix that even more if we want to. But basically, that's, that's the action. So. The reason I split it like this, let me just delete this. So if we had to go, so this is the other method, and if you have the new Photoshop, I don't think it's that new, but if you go into any selection tool, up here, let's go into one, right? Um, see select subject, you click there, and then you give it a second, and it's been very impressive how good it selects the subject straight out. Now, what you can do is uh, you could just go right click invert, Okay, and then do the same thing, go uh, filter, blur, Gaussian blur, right? It will do, it's gonna do pretty much the same thing there. But what I've seen is it blurs the edges a bit too much for my liking, see there? Okay, now, the reason I pull it apart, is, let me go another step further. So, um, we're gonna delete this, we're gonna go one, we're gonna select subject, Give it a second. Now, the, what I was doing is I duplicate this selection, right? So she's pulled off of the background. So that, that helps a little because now you've got a clean cut of her and you're blurring what's underneath her. Now, if you blur the bottom layer, so it's the same thing as the bottom layer, guys blur. Now the problem is you get this like glowing effect from her, see? Because it's glowing, her, it's, it's fading her outwards. So you get this like glowing effect around her from gray there, you see that? Now, what I was doing initially is I'm cutting her out of the background so she can't be blurred. So what we do, what we do, oh geez, undo all of that. Uh, okay, so what we do is we go duplicate, we go select subject, and instead of saying copy to pull her up from there, you say 
cut, right? So now she's been cut out of this background. Now when you select this background and you say filter Gaussian blur, now you're only blurring the background. You're not getting the same gray blur on the side of her. You see that? So that's why I do this process. Now you can use the same process to do, you can warm the background with us. So you can like go in here and then um, change the background color and it's not affecting her because because there's a clean cutout of her on top of what you're doing, it's never gonna affect her, right? See, that's the background, that's that's without it. So you can do all kinds of nonsense with this. And, um, you know, and then you could go another step further, like you could duplicate this and then uh, blur it again. Let's go blur it again. So blur it like a bad amount. And then we're gonna go invert the mask. And then with, with white, we're just gonna paint where we want we want the new, we want the new blur to get added, right? So now you can add blur to just the chairs, okay? And you've left that a little bit less blurry. And you can keep doing this because, so if there was a tree close, if you want to blur a little bit and then in the background you want to blur more, it will make more sense to like a photographer. Um, now this is closer, so that's more blurry, and you know what I mean? Or, or the other way around, you want this more in focus and that more blurry, and you can maybe fade some edges. So there's a lot of, a lot better ways to use this, but that's the gist of it. You separate her from a background, blur the layer underneath her, and you don't have to select her really. Sometimes you'll have an issue where, where, um, where it will like struggle with a piece, and then you can just work with that piece, you know? But in general, it, it does really well. So we're gonna try this on another, Another photo, let's go into this one. So this one's a bit more busy, but you'll see the same thing. Select subject. Okay. Select subject, now it's pulled her out. It does a really good job of selecting her. You can see, obviously there it's grabbed a piece of this. So what you can do is uh, not use the action or you just gotta remove this piece as well, okay? So we'll, we'll go step by step for this one. So we'll go duplicate. W, select subject, okay. This is just because of that issue. We're gonna go with a one tool, we're gonna, we're gonna go Alt, we're just gonna deselect that piece, okay. Um, you can go further in here and see, like you'll see her hair, but often it looks like this, but it selected her hair quite well. And then what we're gonna do is go right click, cut, we go mask, we go filter, blue, Gaussian blur, and then obviously you don't wanna go that rough. What we're trying to blur is just this like real deep background. And then what I would do is I wouldn't leave it blurry like this. I will invert the mask, paintbrush, we'll take a normal paintbrush. And then what I'll do is I'm just gonna blur the part way at the back that I want to blur, okay? You can you just do this properly. I'm just doing it quickly for simple Sunday sake. Um, so you can see, we're just gonna blur everything behind this bookshelf. Um, and we can maybe blur it right in front of the floor here. And then you can see what we've done there in like a second, just giving it a bit more of a blur. So let's go, let's do the same thing. We're gonna warm the background. See, it's not warming her at all. So you can get cool grading effects because you're warming the background. It's not affecting the model at all. You know, go the opposite way and make it very blue. So the good thing is it's not affecting her ever because we've got this clean cut above, you see? Okay, and then we'll try on the last one. Um, Select, we're gonna go duplicate, uh, select subject, W, select subject. Just give it a second. Okay, so you can see it even cuts out her hair quite well. And then we're gonna go right click, cut. Okay, and then from this one, filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and the same thing. It works really nicely for outdoor portraits, uh, more than, than stuff that where, where the wall is close, you know. Uh, from there, invert the mask. So I alt click on here, it makes an inverted mask brush. And then uh, same same deal, blur bits. I wouldn't blur the whole image and start looking very fake. Um, I would just blur parts, like these leaves I'll leave and then uh, blur that part there. And then you end up with a little bit blurry of a background. I like to use this technique with warming the background. So if the model's warmed really well and then, or cooling the background, like they change the background to blue or like super orange, you know? So use this to split the layers and then go from there. Okay, if you wanna make an action for this, I'm gonna do this really quickly. Uh, what you do 
as you go here. If you don't have an action bar, go to window, click actions, and it will appear, it will probably appear here, and then you can pull it to where you want it. So I pull it here because I use them quite often. Um, and then in this thing over here, you click there, you name it what you want to name it. So we go select subject, and then we go record. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate this one time. We're gonna duplicate it, and then we're going to say W, select subject. Give it a second, right click, cut, okay? And then I would stop here, I would just click stop, and then that, that would be the action. But if you wanted to make a blur action, so we go right click here, we go filter, we go blur. Okay, now it's blurred the layer. And then what I would do is not flatten this because you don't want to be stuck with it. I would just put a mask on it so that you can like control I and invert it and work from there. So from there, stop. Okay, we're gonna delete these two. All right, and then we go to button mode. Now you've got this one, which is the new one. It will blur the subject by itself. So if I just click it and wait, it should just blurry background. Boom, so we got a blurry background just like that. So this is the technique, and then you can see, because we left the mask there, now with a black paintbrush, you just take off of the areas you don't want blurred. So we're gonna take it off of there, you know what I mean? Just to, give, just to make it make it still look a little, oh, that's not good. Make it look a little bit more real, you know? And if you wanna blur it again, just, just click there and filter and blur it again. It'll go, it'll keep the same blurrier. So that's the method, um, it's very, very simple. Try make an action. If you want to make an action for just select subject, just don't put the blur layer before you stop it. If you want to make the one with the blur instantly in, just call it blur, so blur background. Um, this works really well. The new select subject feature in the Photoshop is really, really like, it's really clever. It's really quick at picking up subjects. So um, use this, you can use it in studio to um, pull the subject away from the background and then blur the background so that the backdrop if it has creases in it, it will get a bit softer. So that's a cool method to use it. You can use creative ways to just use this quick technique. And if you do use it for something other than what I did, please tag me in your stuff on Instagram. I'd love to see what you did with it. Show me a before and after. Um, and then uh, show your friends. If you like this, please share the video. And then I'm gonna jump back to myself that I shot in the past and just do the outro. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. Peace. Okay, thank you so much for watching. It was uh, great to have you guys back for another episode of uh, Simple Sundays. I need an intro for this. Anyway, so in this series, I want to just go over very basic things. So if there's a whole big tutorial going on that you're learning from someone, and there's one step that it keeps saying a word, you don't understand what it is, please let me know. And I will try and just make a video on that one subject so it doesn't get lost in all the other mix of things. Um, if you want to just know about the setting on your camera, what is, what is AI servo, what is the tracking, how do you set up tracking, if it's not a Sony brand camera, if it's Canon or Fuji, I have used them before, so I will be able to. Nikon, I will have to go do some research. Um, and if you want a specific camera, I'll try to find someone who has it and I'll do a, a video on it. Please drop it in the comments below and then I will jump right onto that. Anyway, a big thank you to everybody who comes and watches my videos. I know a lot of you come for the vlogs, some of you come for the tutorials, some come for behind the scenes, and uh, some of you just watch everything, which is very, very cool of you. And I uh, appreciate everybody. Anyway. Uh, remember, drop a like, comment, subscribe, share it with a friend, Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram, tag me in your images. I'd love to see what you guys are doing. And I will see you on the next video. Peace.